Bass proposed to his girlfriend while behind bars and she said yes. So what's the attraction with felons? We're joined by social commentator Lisa Oldfield and family counsellor therapist uh, Karen Phillip. Great to see you both. Now, Hi, Karen. Karen Scott, he's reportedly transformed himself mm -hmm. you know, into sort of a, a, a model prisoner. Yes, apparently so. What, what is the, the attraction that some women seem to have for guys behind bars? Well, look, there's, there's a whole range of... of conditions that they label for this but in this particular case with um with butler and and rush it's slightly different he's he made a mistake when he was 19 he did a stupid thing he's not uh, a hardened criminal he doesn't hurt people he doesn't attack people he doesn't maim people he just did a stupid thing he deserves a second chance i think so and and i think the, the reality is and then we all agree that that the penalty of what they've received over there a death sentence or a life sentence is particularly harsh but the fact is that a lot of women do like these relationships because, one, they know exactly where their partner is at all times. <laughs> they, um, they have a sense of control. They do. Yeah. And their romance stays alive because it's, it's always in a hype. They, they miss them all the time. Both partners miss each other. So there's a whole range of reasons why women do. And she's obviously what we call a rescuer. And they love to take on uh, the victim and rescue them and, and look after them. So, yeah, there's a range of reasons. She's in finance. She's a London banker. Smart um, lady. You know, she must be obviously aware that, that her husband-to-be could be executed. <laughs> well, you know, I, I disagree with Karen, and I think his crime was very serious. You know, he smuggled 8.2 kilos of heroin, mm -hmm. and if you've ever lost someone from heroin, you see the damage the drug does. I, I, I think he was guilty of, of a very serious crime. Um, yeah, but they compare marriage to a life sentence, so perhaps Scott can tell us um, whether it's like that or, or, or not. Um, you know, it reminds me of, of my friend when he went to jail for forgery. Um, it was very sad, um, and it happened at the same time when I stopped getting birthday cards from Brad Pitt and George Clooney. No, so no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, look, if, it, if, she, if she's going to put him on the straight and narrow, it's, it's got to be a good thing. But she Absolutely. does have two small children. I, I yes. am concerned that, you know, what impact is it going to have on them? And, you know, if this guy, you know, gets um, you know, a, a reduction in his yeah. sentence, he comes back, you know, do you really want someone that, like that around your kids? I don't do know. Do you understand the whole thing? I've, he I've, was uh, 19, and, and yeah. look, and, and you're right, it, it was very serious. Eight kilos is, it can kill a lot of people. But the fact is that how many of us in our teenage years haven't done something stupid, okay, perhaps not as seriously stupid as this, but we've all made incredibly bad judgments. And I, I would like to think, and I do like to find the best in people when yeah, I can, that's a good but I do like to think that, that this, what, he's not a criminal, he never had a record as far as I understand. Mm -hmm. He made a stupid, stupid mistake. That doesn't make him a bad person. All right, well, makes let's, him silly. Let, let, let's move on to this. A woman has sued a, a friend for more than $800,000 after she fell and slipped at the friend's place on a rainy night. She says her friend of almost 10 years had failed to warn her that the veranda was slippery. She lost the case, but of course, uh, it has caused a major falling out uh, between friends. What do you think, Lisa? Is it okay to sue a mate in these sort of circumstances? Uh, no, and I think this is why insurance premiums are going through the roof. You know, people need to start taking some personal responsibility for their actions. Yeah. You know, I, I tripped and fell and broke my ankle um, on a broken footpath. You know, at the end of the day, I was wearing high heels. I should have been looking where I was going. I wasn't going to go and sue counsel. So I think this is very unfortunate. Um, and I think a lot of people these days think that suing a large corporation like an insurance company oh, is akin easy. to winning the lottery. Yes, yes. You know, take some personal responsibility. Well, we're becoming very American. I mean, like, I've been to a party yes. in America where, where the guests, they were friends, signed waivers at the door to say that if anything happened on their way home or oh, as a result no. of drinking alcohol, they wouldn't sue. Oh, no, that's, that's just sad. Well, but it could easily happen here. This particular woman, 850000 plus, that's mm. what she tried to sue for, for broken ankle. Mm. That, that is greed. Mm. It's as simple as that, it's greed. I think that there probably is a degree of responsibility from their property owner. The tiles were wet, there was no handrail. So while there may be a slight degree of responsibility there, to sue for close to a million dollars... We used to accept mm. bad luck though, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, true. Now we don't. True. Now, our mother has spoken out after her Facebook account was blocked because she posted pictures of her children playing in the bath. Now, it appears that one of her friends dobbed her in here. Facebook said it's got a strict policy against pornographic content and it told the mother to remove the photo. What do you think about this type of thing, Lisa? Is this, you know, just the political correctness gone too far, or is this fair enough? Look, if you'd asked me that question last week, um, I would have said yes, but unfortunately I've been the victim of a stalker this week. Something very serious. This guy has stalked me at work, 
Um, he, I, I don't know him. Um, he took offence to something I've said on television. Um, I blocked him as soon as he started to abuse me. Mm -hmm. um, he was posing as a friend of mine on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I have the highest level of security, so I don't share anything with somebody that I don't know. He's taken those images of my children, he's shared them around the internet, he's linked them to pedophilia and to, uh, sorry, um, to child pornography. And, um, and I've, you know, I, I have put my children in a position, and they are one and three years old, because of dickhead. No, the fact so, is that so you haven't put yourself in a position. He's created this. You haven't done anything wrong. What, what do you feel you can do about this? I can't do anything. It's out there now, Cam. Like, and, you know, and these two beautiful little boys who are one and three years old, because this creep uh, you know, ha has some issue with me. I'm a big girl. I've got my big girl panties on. I can take someone on like this. Yeah. But you know, when you start involving my one and three year old and, and sharing images that are so private and so personal, like to all and sundry on the internet, what, what can I do? So yeah. please, all I can say to mothers, and fathers, be careful about what you post. And that's exactly right. Once they're out there, they're out there. And anybody can use them, pick them up and do exactly like this perpetrator's done to Lisa, which is not your fault for putting cute pictures on the on Facebook to your friends. That's right. And I, I hate it's the guilt that fault. people feel about doing yes, that. It, look, yes. Lisa, it, you know, it's very distressing for any parent to go through what you're going through. What, but have the police helped? Have, have well, Facebook helped? What? Everyone is being fantastic. There's investigations going on now. Um, Channel 9, my employer, DocuSign, they've, they've been incredible, um, my, my friends and my family. But you, know, you can't stop, it's stop a nut job like this. No, you know, like I can't. said, once it's out there, it's out there. And but you've done nothing wrong. That's the big thing. And, and as you say, Cam, about the, the guilt that we feel and that these people make us feel, you've done nothing wrong. You've put beautiful little photos, and these are cute pictures. They are cute pictures. But once they're out there, they're out there for anybody to use, which is unfortunately what's happened. But the fact is that, yes, we need to be mindful, but the fact is also you only shared it with your friends. This person portrayed themselves as, as a friend. Yeah, and that's, that was very name. sneaky. What they did was, yeah. um, you know, I was friends with a girl named Marianne Fisher, and then I got another friend request from Marianne Fisher. I thought, oh, I thought I was already friends and accepted. Yeah. And, and that's, how, that's how we got mm. my material. Yeah, you know? it's so easy to do that too. But, it you is. know, I hate the way it modifies our behaviour, all of this stuff. I think, you know, as a community, we should take it back. Well, where we can, but unfortunately with, with things like Facebook and, and Instagram and, and all of these things that are out there, our lives have changed. The world is different, and it's as simple as that. Yeah, not for the better either. Thanks for sharing with that. Um, and, thanks, Kim. Uh, yeah, and thanks, Karen. You've been amazing. Thank you. Big hugs all around. Yeah. We'll, we'll get through this. And uh, back to you, Deb. Um, terrible story there. Yeah, incredibly distressing, Lisa. I hope you get some redress, and I'm sure yeah. that the authorities will help you out. You know, our thoughts are with you. All right, still to come.